Hello and welcome everybody to 2005. And as we all remember, the US Open won by Michael Campbell, a New Zealand New Zealander, comes to the United States and is just like, oh, you Americans think you can play golf? Well, I'm from New Zealand. Eat it! And he just smoked everybody, the US Open, Pinehurst. So it's an interesting year. Oh, and by the way, do you remember that classic Tiger Woods pose where he's like, yeah, that's from the 2005 Masters. I, there are going to be, there's going to be somebody who watches who wasn't even born in 2005. I wasn't even born in 2005. You're young. Enjoy life. Get out and golf some. So during all of that drama and excitement of 2005, we have McGregor, which is just crawling along, trying to compete. And they come out with this, which looks very, it has lots of character. I would recognize these from a mile away. They really stand out to me. And we should talk about the details and identifying features about its boldness on the review table. Let's have a closer look. For me, this has always been a very memorable club. It's easy for me to recognize these out on the range or on the course. So there's an insert right here in the tiny cavity up by the top line on the aft portion of the club. It says M565V foil. So V in front of it, there's this banner and it's actually proud. It actually sticks up where it says V foil. So you can actually feel that. And then underneath that, it's a speed. V, V foil, speed, McGregor. Okay, now I like a lot of this stuff. They're sticking with some of the old names, like, you know, if you're familiar with the 945 irons and things, and so they have the M565, I like that. And then the most memorable part of this club for me is the step feature right here. It looks like there are just like these steps. So on the sole, you know, glossy, shiny, chrome, and then there's the iron number, and then step, step, big step. So kind of three steps up to this cavity. Looking at the heel profile, you can see forged right here. And toe profile looks very classic. Kind of a thicker top line right here. But it looks very modern. I think this was very competitive. You know, when so many companies are competing, like Nike had come out at this time, and Nike and McGregor and Callaway and, I mean, it got a little bit crowded in the market. And so maybe that's why McGregor had trouble competing because it was so competitive. And then we move up to the ferrule, single gray stripe ferrule. There is a stepless shaft on this. You can see exactly what it is. I'm not gonna read all of this for you. Needless to say, made in the USA, rifle shaft. And then this sticker I just put on here so I can remember the year, McGregor, Tor Velvet style. It even says V foil on the grip. Lovely. Tor Velvet. Golf Pride. So lovely grips. And I mean, it looks very competitive technology wise to all the clubs from its era. So let's get this out on the range and see how it feels. This is a good club. Even back in the day, I think people recognized, oh yeah, this is a good club, a uh, little bit pricey, maybe we can get something for cheaper. And then I think the biggest thing for my group of friends was everybody wanted to be Tiger Woods and they wanted their Nike, whatever it was, Ignite or whatever series Nike was on in 2005. And they were like, I am Tiger Woods. And they're trying to like get on in two and make double eagles or sorry, Pelicans. Wait, they're not called pelicans? Albatross. <laughs> I'm just thinking about uh, Zion Williamson. So, these. I mean, McGregor didn't exactly have scores. Like, Nike had the top player, you know, Tiger Woods, and right, it was Rory McElroy on at that time as a Nike player. They, were, they had, like, the big stars Nike did. 
And so everybody's chasing Nike. All my friends wanted Nike. I wanted Nike. And then this kind of just slipped under the radar where, you know, oh yeah, it's a good club, but let's jump on board with something else. And so looking back, this is the one that jumps out to me as the most interesting because I've hit all those other clubs. You know, I know Callaway and TaylorMade. I've hit so many RAC clubs, it makes me sick. Then these are like, wow, this kind of hidden gem. And Mizuno was dominating, you know, the iron world back then too. I mean, they were so, it was so competitive in the 2000s. And then, you know, for me, is this number one? This genuinely might be my number one mid-2000s club. I'm just trying to think of anything else that has as much character or as much interest as this that's not just like we haven't been saturated with. So let me know your thoughts about the V-Foil. Not V-Steel. V-Foil. <laughs> Different from the tailor-made V-Steel. The branding here is a little... Uh, McGregor. Was this the last great... Or was it even great? Was this the last great McGregor iron? It'll be an interesting time in the comments. I'm going to see what everybody has to say about it. But in my opinion, this is this is worthy as one of like easily a top pick for an iron in 2005. As usual, thanks to my patrons for your support. You can also support this channel by visiting my Amazon shop. I'll put a link in the description below. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. Thank you so much for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.